Hello and welcome to my video. Please do subscribe if you aren't already. Uh, and as ever, uh, please love to hear your comments uh, if, you, if you have them uh, about the video. So what I wanted to do today was to focus a little bit about on colour, um, but more specifically about uh, acrylic paint and the brands that I use and why I use what I use. Uh, because when I was just checking through my previous videos, I've done one other, other video about colour uh, where I talk about the approach I take to identifying what colours I want to include in a painting. Um, but that was a, quite a while ago. And I realised I haven't really talked about the brands. And the reason that it's kind of driven me towards this is actually I've got quite a lot of really lovely comments about the colours I've been using in my panoramic view paintings that I'm just finishing ready for Harrogate Art Fair. Uh, please uh, on that it's the 14th to the 16th of October so if you want tickets please contact me or subscribe to my newsletter I'll put the link in the notes uh, so that you'll be able to get free tickets. Uh, so anyway I digress the uh, panoramic views so Having done a little bit of a chat about these uh, brands and what I use and why, I'm going to focus on the palette I've been using for my pan my recent panoramics um, and just share with you a little bit about how I mix them on this wet palette that I've made and the sorts of uh, thinking behind the colours. Mm. Uh, talking a little bit about the brands that I use, um, historically, when I started using uh, acrylic paint to make my mixed media paintings, I started using a uh, System 3. Um, they are made in the UK and uh, they're a good, um, sort of fairly, um, sort of reasonably priced or very reasonably priced brand. Uh, sometimes uh, the uh, colour is not maybe as vibrant as it might be, but quite often the colours are quite good. So I, even though um, now I've, you know, sort of I use other brands, I still use quite a, a large number of, of uh, acrylics from System 3. For example, Titanium White is something that I uh, routinely use. And because I use a lot of it, I have a bigger uh, container that I decant into. These 500 mil uh, ones are very useful because um, you can clean off the lids and you just can keep them in, in, in this and, and decant from here. Um, this phthalo blue I have continued to use, even though it's a more of a transparent colour and I often go to a different brand for my more transparent, vibrant colours, but I still am using System 3 phthalo blue. And the cadmiums I tend to use from System, uh, System 3, so this is a cadmium red. Now, there are other makes as well. Now, I have this Liquitex uh, heavy body uh, titanium white, and that is does give really, really good coverage if you want uh, a completely opaque um, white that doesn't, uh, that really does cover very well. Uh, that said, I still do routinely use my System 3. And another sort of make I sometimes use, which is again reasonably priced, probably similar to De La Rone, is the Lucas uh, uh, colours, uh, the Lucas uh, brand. Um, and you get this if you're in the UK from Jackson's. Um, I'm not sure where else it, it comes from. I've always got mine from Jackson's and I have a few colours in that. But the other main brand I do use hand in hand with System 3 uh, is Golden, which is an American brand. It's not at all, uh, it's pricey, it's not at all cheap, but they are incredibly good quality and the pigment is really intense and vibrant in these particular uh, paints. So I tend to use, I mostly have bought tubes, but that's again for cost. Uh, if you buy bigger, it's uh, cheaper, but it depends on how much colour you're using of a particular one as to whether you want to make that investment and buy the tubs. So I routinely buy this size in the Goldens because it does work out better value, but it's not going the whole hog and buying a pot of it. So this is 100 and I think it's 100. And, oh, this is 150 mil. So I think the first containers are about 250 mil. I think they, they do a container in 250 mil, but that's obviously more expensive than this. So 150 mil. Um, I tend to buy my my transparent colours where the intensity of colour is really important. I tend to use golden if I can. So I've got the I use two particular transparent yellows which I've been using in my panoramics and I always buy golden in those. 
so Indian yellow and Nico Azo yellow. They are warm, transparent yellows, which are just gorgeous. And I often mix them with white and with other colours as well. Uh, and when I'm using the quinacridones and other other bright, cut, vibrant colours, transparent, then I tend to use golden. So this is quinacridone magenta. I'm not using huge amounts of that, so I don't always buy big tubes. So this is a 60 mil tube or a 59 mil tube. And then sometimes, and, and that's another gold in there, which is really in blue. Sometimes uh, I buy Liquitex. Uh, this is a, a Liquitex manganese blue. Um, and Liquitex, again, as I said, with the titanium of very good quality. On the, on the more expensive side, though, um, in terms of, of budget. And what I have been, what happened with the, with the De La Rone was, I realised that my alizarin crimson, which is a transparent red, a cool red i was finding that when i looked at it it was really quite um the color just wasn't the pigment wasn't rich enough for me it was quite subdued and it just didn't have the intensity and vibrancy i was after so i was looking first of all and jackson's is another brand which can be quite good now jackson's do a artist range which, which this is and they also do a studio range, both of them quite good. And this is their artist range. And I have been using, they do bigger tubes, but often they're out of stock. So this is their uh, alizarin crimson. And I routinely use a Jackson's alizarin crimson in these tubes. And this is a 60 mil tube and they do a 250 mil, I think it is. Um, but again, oft, uh, that's often um, out of stock, but it does. It does have inten the, an intensity of colour and the quality of the pigment is very good. And what I do with my paints when I'm mixing them on my palette is when you need to, because um, they're all, all heavy body and quite thick, you do often need to um, add uh, to them to get them to, to, to change their sort of viscosity, their, their, you know, sort of make them a bit runnier. And I tend to, rather than using water, which dilutes the pigment, I use the golden gloss medium. I use the gloss medium a lot. Uh, I use it for my collage work. I use it to seal in between layers and I use it uh, as I'm mixing my paints. And that's lying on its side because I'm running out of that one and that hence the new pot. Um, so that's what I tend to do. And by doing that with the gloss medium, it doesn't tend to dilute the pigment out. So you still have a richness. So that is my, I sometimes use some water and of course the water seeps through to an extent um, from into the paper that you're putting the paints on. But generally I tend to use gloss medium. So this is my routine uh, palette and you'll have seen that sitting uh, uh, on my desk when I'm talking about my painting when I'm using it. Just so I just quickly run through just in case you've missed previous videos where I talk about this. So this is just a plastic tray and I have got wet paper towel and then I use a greaseproof paper, a baking paper. Now you can use tracing paper but I find it easier to use the greaseproof on the roll. Uh, and I try and keep this wet because as soon as this goes dry, then the paints dry out very quickly. And depending on the time of year, they dry, you know, even more quickly. So in the summer, it's very, you really do have to keep spraying underneath to keep, keep it from drying out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my paints down. Uh, I'll put the camera over so you can see and I'll have the paints out that I've been using for my panoramics, my recent uh sort of summer autumn panoramic of views uh, and share with you what I do for those. Okay so very briefly then the colours that I've been using for my recent panoramics uh, that are focusing on the sort of autumn late summer sort of time have been these really. So I have a mixture of, I haven't got cool and warm of each of my primaries um, but I have of the reds um, so what I've got here is Indian yellow, nickel azo yellow, both of those are golden and they are transparent colours. This is quinacridone magenta, which is also golden and also transparent. Then I have my Jackson's alizarin crimson, which is transparent. Um, so these uh, two reds are cool. Uh, this is a system three cadmium red 
and it's a much warmer colour as you can see um, and it's uh, opaque. Then I have System 3 Pathalo Blue which is uh, transparent uh, and then I've got a, a pool here just so you can see of the gloss medium that I use when I'm mixing the colours and then I've got my titanium white which is from uh, System 3. So if I start by mixing a really dark uh, purple because that purple was in my paintings especially with reference to the moors so routinely what I will do is I will mix uh, quantities of this blue the uh, alizarin crimson and some Indian yellow in pretty much equal quantities depending and, and it the, the color then changes depending on the relative amounts of the uh, three colours. So if I put more blue in and it goes much more purple, if I put more pink in, it goes obviously red in, it goes much more to the red uh, colour. So I reckon that that, and it's hard to tell because it's pretty much verging on black when it's, when it's that dark. Um, I might just put a bit more blue in and so you can hopefully see the change. Now what I might have to do is to, let me put some of this end to change the consistency and I'm obviously not necessarily going to use a lot of that uh, that dark but if I put some white in you start to see what the colour is so I'm just going to grab and to a point I don't worry about so you can see now the the, the, the pinkishness um, coming through and I might want to keep that as a dark so this is actually quite a nice uh, purpley heathery colour now. Uh, so that's one of my key colours. I might say right well I want a much more lighter version of it and then I just keep mixing with white and hopefully you can see and I can change the relative ratios of constituents to change that purple. So that's a really nice uh, purple now and often I just use keep the brush in and choose another brush. So what I'm also going to show you uh, is it's on the it's on the it's 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 relatively um kind of it's a mixture of cool and warm but it's it's relatively cool a lot of these colors are cool but the yellows are the things that warm it up so those three colors but really that red i'm only really using if i'm using green and i'm i'm actually sort of softening the green because i'm using the opposites on the color wheel but that is is a separate issue so what i also do quite have quite a bit of is just a mix of the white with the yellow and that gives me a really lovely rich warm yellow and this is the Indian yellow together with some white now I might say I think that's too bright I might not be but if I did say it was too bright I'm going to use a bit of purple but I'm going to have that purple from the edge there and you can see how it flattens that color off and the reason it does that is because the purple is opposite to yellow on the color wheel so when you add something um, that is the opposite on the color wheel then it flattens it off the same if i had a bright green as i was mentioning before if i put a little bit of red in it would flatten uh, it off and neutralize it a bit so that's one yellow and I'll keep with this brush for now just to show you the other yellow. So when I use this yellow, it's even more of a, a brighty bright. And that arguably might need flattening off to a greater extent than that, that does. And then um, you can again add a bit of purple to flatten that off if you wanted to. You might not want to, you might keep, want to keep. I've kept it quite a lot on the paintings, quite bright. Um, in which case you just mix a bit more of your of your yellow in and you might need a bit more white to lighten it up a bit and some of that and to get the um ready brown color i tend to use some alizarin crimson with uh some indian yellow that gives me a lovely ready uh, color if i if i think it's a bit too red i can now just attach touch of blue and that will tend to make it browner and darker 
And if I'm careful, I can kind of make a bit of a burnt sienna kind of colour. But at any rate, it's a lovely ready brown, that one. So here in my paintings here, I'm actually work working with cools and warms and saturated and desaturated. What I mean by saturated and desaturated is the very bright and then the flatter colours. Um, but a lot of it is to do with having the, the warmer um, yellows against the cooler uh, blues and purples and, and darks. Uh, so that's that's how I'm achieving it, really. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, so please do like and subscribe if you can. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.